thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Agnes Morgor. I'm a judge in the Court of Appeal in a coastal town called Malindi. And I'm also the president of the Association of Women Judges Kenya chapter. Well, we've heard it uh, all from the, um, my colleagues here and sisters on the human trafficking from a Kenya context. Uh, we've heard that um, human trafficking in Kenya mainly is for labor or sexual exploitation, that Kenya is a source, transit and destination country for men, women and children, and the reasons for human trafficking are mainly poverty, unemployment, illiteracy. The other side of the story is lack of prioritization of the government of using the limited resources it has on enforcement of human uh, trafficking laws. So we were here last year, uh, 2018, and we may, came up with various recommendations. Out of those recommendations, we tried to pick up on some as the women judges to see what we could do in, in Kenya. And we try to look at it from the perspective of prevention, uh, persecution, protection, policy, and cooperation. And these are some of the areas we thought we could work on. All of this uh, continues to be work in progress because Rome was not built in one day, and we're in the appropriate capital for that. So, one of the most important things that we realized is sensitization of the government and its agencies on human trafficking legislation and the requirement of vigilance from all state agency players in this area. Um, that is one area that we have been uh, trying to, to get involved in, particularly as you have heard my colleagues mention about the CUCs, the court user committees. Uh, they have various elements within them from the state agencies. We are trying to use that in that particular forum as a, a place of sensitization. There is also the necessary employment of various interventions to address the root causes of human trafficking, which is unemployment and illiteracy. How to deal with that is a, is a big problem we have in Kenya. And, and it's an area we continue to discuss with the relevant agencies to see what kind of, of interventions can be brought in. Economic empowerment, again, that goes together with unemployment and literacy, illiteracy. Then there is sensitization of the public to understand what human trafficking is all about, what it entails, um, how we create awareness on the effects of human trafficking on persons, uh, migrants and, and on refugees who may fall victim. We've come across um, general unawareness in schools, church organizations, parishes, just people generally in Kenya um, are not aware of what uh, uh, trafficking, human trafficking is all about. We've seen this as very fertile ground under which we can, as, a, as an association, try to um, get involved in sensitizing members of the public, especially school children. We find that as a place where we have a lot uh, of, of influence that we can have as women judges. And then demanding of the Kenya government to take a keen interest in the plight of, its Kenyan, of Kenyans working abroad. Uh, there's a continued push for regulatory bodies to ensure that they come up with proper agreements on how to regulate recruitment, and um, also another place where um, through our labor laws and through the courts, uh, we have an employment and labor relations court, uh, we can use those agencies, we use our members within that to try and, and promote uh, proper uh, models for recruitments abroad. From a prosecution perspective, like I said, we, we engage with the prosecution. Uh, we try to use, to use the forum of the CUCs for in investigations and to be able to get the prosecution to conduct their cases in ways that we can secure convictions. 
Um, human trafficking laws are still very complicated in Kenya and from a prosecution perspective, um, they prefer to use the other laws, uh, Sexual Offences Act and some of the other laws, as opposed to using uh, the prosecution, uh, the, the trafficking laws a lot more. We're trying to get them to understand how the laws on anti-trafficking uh, work and how they can use them much more than they have been using them up to date. We're trying to develop jurisprudence in this area uh, to create and inform and create more certainty in the process. Uh, the jurisprudence, because the cases are few, we don't have as much case law to give us support in this area. Once again, we're trying to develop jurisprudence. We've also mentioned use of a bench book that will help us in this area. This is something that we feel is a practical way in which we as courts and judges and magistrates can help in this area of, traf of, of human trafficking. Um, we're also pushing very hard to s establish special courts. You've heard about the special courts we are trying to introduce in Kenya uh, to deal with gender-based violence and human trafficking um, and, and focus on prosecution in these areas. We feel that with that, we will get a more expedited process uh, where we will take the victims through less of an arduous process uh, in, in prosecuting of these cases. They will end up being dealt with as, as specific case types, and therefore they will, be, they will move a lot faster instead of getting choked up in the justice system. As far as um, protection of victims is concerned, uh, we are hoping to work, with, or we have started consultations with the government as the women judges to establish shelters all over the countries and all, all over the country, especially in the counties, of which there are not very many in, in, in a lot of our counties. We have 47 counties in Kenya. Um, some counties have shelters, others don't. And victims tend to be put among um, the accused persons or remandees in prisons. Um, we don't think this is the right way to deal with trafficking victims. We need to find a way, a, a better way to deal with them so as that we don't stigmatize them and create all this um, psychosocial stress uh, on them. We need to also, we're trying to look into ways within which a lot of these shelters and uh, NGOs can help to resettle survivors and just be an ear to them for all you know, their frustrations, hopes, their dreams. Just be there for them and build them back to be the people who they could have been had they not found themselves in situations of being trafficked. Um, we, what we're trying to work with um, social workers, uh, professional psychologists, counselors, healthcare personnel. I, we think that in this uh, fight against um, human trafficking, all of us need to work together in order that we can be able to get more traction in this, in this area. Um, once again, it's, it's an area that, you know, trying to get the networks to work in a seamless way has been very difficult uh, due to limited resources, limited uh, ways in which we are able to, co to contact one another. Uh, but these networks are slowly building up and hopefully uh, we will have more positive stories as we continue to go forward. Then there's the policy and uh, cooperation area, which is um, how to deal with, with the resourcing in this area, how to deal with um, interagency sharing um, in, in the area of human trafficking and human uh, smuggling, um, intra-agency and working as a region with our, our uh, neighboring uh, colleagues, uh, Uganda, Tanzania, you've heard, uh, Rwanda, uh, Somalia, and so on. These are things that are not so easy for us to establish, but we are trying to see what part we, what role we can play in some of these areas, uh, just to be able to get a more seamless way uh, in which we can, all of us in our respective areas of responsibility, uh, be able to work with others to bring more impact um, into this area. Um, 
Looking at it from the women judges' perspective, uh, this last year we have done a lot of sensitization of judges, judicial officers, uh, school children. Uh, you heard that we worked with organizations like Equality Now and Heart. Working with them has brought to us, a, a, a opened up a whole new world to us as judges and, uh, and magistrates because we were able to see some of the, the, the problems that are faced in this area with um, victims of trafficking going through uh, the court system and some of the challenges uh, within which uh, they face uh, just trying to deal with, with this problem. Uh, we were even told about a case where uh, some Nepalese girls had been brought into the trafficked into the country, and they were used, um, you know, to entertain in nightclubs. They never saw their money. They were just like, um, you know, convicti convicts in a, in an institution where they were kept by their by their by the perpetrators. And when they were finally rescued and were taken through the court system, we were told that it was the most excruciating, painful process for them. And every day they just kept telling um, you know, their rescuers, just allow us to go home. We just want to go home. And because the court process was so long, we were able to appreciate, uh, or when we were working with this NGO heart on the kind of challenges that uh, they go through, we came to the appreciation that we too need to be part of the process of, of expediting these cases. And these are some of the things as members of, uh, of the women judges we're able to share amongst our members so that they too are conscious of the kind of interventions that they can take uh, to be able to bring these cases to a quick close. And then finally, um, we're, trying to look into ways in which uh, our laws can be amended in order that human trafficking is not, uh, or, or the, the, the legislation around uh, human trafficking is, is made more, um, it, it put, place, put in a way that once the cases are brought to court, it, it's not such a challenge in order to, to secure convictions. Uh, so these are some of the things that we're looking at as women judges. But one year on, we've certainly made uh, some strides in this area. And um, we think that uh, as women judges, we will continue to do a lot more. Thank you.